What's going on my friends? I'm Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we are going to talk about whether or not current actually travels in a neutral conductor. Now, before we get started, we offer continuing education. Yes, we're approved in a whole bunch of different states. You can go to electricianu.com, click on the little bar on the right, go to continuing education, and we have a bunch of different states. We have more states that we're adding, so if you don't see your state, soon enough, I promise we will have it. We're spending all of 2022 pretty much trying to make sure that we're in as many states as possible, but it's dope. You just get to watch videos of me doing this. Then we have ground, just says the earth and you get credit for it. So check the link out below, hope to see you in class. All right, so the reason for this is that there's a bunch of uh, people out there, depending, you know, certain environments, they'll have conversations and they're like, well, travel, you know, current never actually travels in a neutral. And it's like, well, yeah, it does. Or some people are like, yeah, it does. No, it does. Sometimes it does. So let's break into that a little bit and see kind of what we're talking about. So imagine that we've got an electrical panel and we've got our lugs. These are our two hots and this is going to be our neutral bus. Say up here, we've got a big canister, uh, you know, a, a light pole. Uh, we've got our primary side and we've got our secondary side. Coming out of there, I probably should have just pre-drawn all of this, sorry, just bear with my drawing. We hook a red wire, black wire right there. We've got a neutral that gets tied to the neutral point. I'm going to like hop over that right there. And the neutral point, we're going to pretend that that's in the middle. I know it's not in the middle. It should be in the, the, the exact middle. That is the neutral point uh, in between the two phases. These are going to be like spots for breakers inside of the panel. This is single phase. Say we've got a light bulb. And that light bulb, we're going to hook up to uh, one of these breakers. Let's just say that it's a red. So we run a wire from our breaker to the bottom of the screw shell. Then we also have a neutral, right? Neutral comes off of the screw shell itself, comes back, hits the neutral bus. All of these reds are connected. Black there. Sorry, I should have pre-drawn all of this. I'm finding out now. Okay, so we have a complete circuit, right? We've got current that can come through here, go all the way out to the bulb, neutral, back. We have a complete circuit. Alternating current's gonna alternate back and forth 60 times a second, which is going to appear to just be solid power, but it's actually pulsing power. So the question is in this instance, with one load hooked up to one side, one phase of this circuit, is there actually current flowing? Well, yeah, I mean, anytime current flows, you have to have a complete circuit. When current flows, it actually means that there are electrons inside of this circuit that are moving. And electricity is not just the movement of electrons. Electric current is the movement of electrons, but there's electric power as well. There's a lot of different terms within what is electricity, but it's not just one thing. There's a whole, many, a whole bunch of different things that are happening. So uh, if you have a conductor, um, we'll say red conductor. We have a, a, a wire. Well, there's all these little atoms that make up what a wire is. So there's not actually an outer layer of any material. It's all in a microscope. It's just a whole bunch of atoms packed together. Each one of the atoms has a little electro, uh, electron on it. And these electrons flow through the medium. So the electrons leaving their atoms and going from atom to atom to atom, that is electric current. So that flowing happens when you have a completed circuit. So a light bulb turns on because we have current flowing and it's a complete circle. So it goes through the red all the way through the neutral. Current flows in the neutral for sure. What happens when current flows is that there are these uh, electromagnetic fields that are generated around the uh, charges, right? So each each electron is a negatively charged particle and around the particle itself is actually a field which moves with the particle. So with the movement of the particles themselves, there's the movement of the fields. If all of these electrons are like moving their way through in one direction, 
all of the fields around those conductors, each one has got its own field, they make up this gigantic field around the wire because they're all additive together and that field also moves. So there is the particles that are moving and there are the fields that are moving. And it's really important because when you take like a magnet and you bring it up close to a wire, the uh, invisible field around that magnet interacts with the invisible field around the particles themselves and that's what makes the particles move. So the field is important just as the particles are important. Now, that's kind of a bit of a digression, but once we get into looking at this, you'll see why that's important. So now let's draw another load. We'll say that it's the exact same light bulb. We got two of them in a pack from Home Depot. And uh, they're both rated the same thing. We'll say that this is like a two amp bulb, and this is a two amp bulb. <laughs> Probably not real numbers, but we're just trying to use something that we can kind of conceptualize. Uh, we'll say we're gonna come off this breaker, we're gonna hit the bottom of that bulb, we're gonna come out with our neutral, make a return back to the same neutral bus. So, if we have two different bulbs on two different circuits, right, we have this phase and we have this phase, is current flowing on the neutral? The loads are balanced, so what it means is that on this red wire we have two amps. We can actually take a multimeter and, and check and clamp over it and we can see, yeah, there's two amps flowing through that conductor. Then we can come over to the black one and put our clamp around that and see, yeah, we have two amps flowing through that one as well. So this is the kind of cool part. If these fields, you ever seen somebody like drop, uh, you know, two different, like uh, two rocks in water. Each one kind of dissipates current, right? Like the the the, the the force outward of all of the lines of uh, current kind of intersect and at a certain point the energies can cancel each other out so that they don't continue doing anything. So the same thing happens when you have fields that interact with other fields. If you have a field that's coming from one direction, it's a wave, and you have a field from another direction, it's a wave, they're going to cancel each other out. They can add together two, there's different things that they do just depending on the situation, but in this case, we have a canceling out effect. So the two amps of current that's coming through is still going through here and getting back to the neutral bus, and the two amps from here is getting back and going to the neutral bus. So it depends on where you're looking to see whether or not current actually flows. Right here, if we took an amp reading, we would have two amps. Right here, it would still show two amps, right? This is still part of the circuit. So there's definitely current traveling to get to this point. Same thing here, we test two amps, two amps. Current is flowing in the neutral. What's interesting is when we take a current reading up here, that is where we're gonna see the current disappear on these neutrals. Basically our, our circuit, our actual circuit is this black and this red. That is the circuit. We take a neutral and we tap the middle point of the circuit, which allows current to kind of flow in these miniature loops, of these 120 volt loops within the big 240 volt circuit. But all of the pushing and pulling is happening in that 240 volt circuit with these two different phases. So where does current actually travel in this instance when we have two, uh, two loads? So say we've got current that is going through red to the first light bulb and then it's going to neutral. It's coming up here. Now, ordinarily with just one circuit on, it would continue to go back up to here and make a complete circuit. But what we're saying is that current's not flowing. We're actually reading no current. So let's look at the other one. We've got the same thing coming out of here. We've got current flowing down through black, going to the bulb. Still current that we're gonna read here, right? because there's nothing that's interacting with it. There's nothing that's, that's going to cancel anything out. But what's interesting is once we get right here, it cuts off. We don't have any current flowing because the combination of both of these is forcing, uh, the, while the red is pushing, the black is pulling, right? So if we have pushing current coming through this neutral and we have pulling current coming through the other neutral, we have this kind of like pushing and pulling thing happening at the same time. So wouldn't that mean in our situation over here where we've got all of these uh, electrons moving that we would have some electrons kind of traversing relatively one direction and we would have uh, some that are kind of moving relative the other direction. Well, if that were truly the case, 
we would have current going in both directions. So it would show additively that there's more current passing one single point in time. And there's not, we show zero current, completely dead, nothing. So what's happening is the fields around here are interacting with each other and completely canceling out. And when a field is interacted with, that's what makes the particle move. So if the fields are dead, there's nothing moving, then the particles themselves are not moving as well. So we basically have just created an insulator. It's still conductive, but there's no ability for current to flow down it. So it becomes literally a dead wire. So no more current is traversing this path. So now the path, since we're not able to traverse this little piece of neutral, comes out here, goes up through here, comes out through here, goes back through neutral, comes back and goes out. And that is how it's making its complete circuit. It's making a complete circuit through two of these different loads instead of through this dead piece of wire that's not able to pass any current. The reason that your multimeter shows that there's zero current being uh, passing is because inside of that ammeter, you know, like say this is your clamp on amp probe, there's a little line here and a little line here. There's actually something that is sensing the magnetic field around the conductor that is running through that thing. It's not sensing a magnetic field, so there's not actually any movement. There's nothing happening to produce that expanding and collapsing magnetic field. So are we really saying that like it's going through one load and through another load just to make its way all the way back and these are conductors it's conducting current's going to take all paths that it can to get from source back to source so it's absolutely going from one phase all the way through the circuit so it just goes to show that there's not actually any current flowing in a neutral in this case when you have two completely balanced loads now let's look at it a little bit different way so if we look at a circuit diagram this is what we essentially had right we have a panel we've got uh, well, I guess that's the transformer really, but you can think of it just as the panel, as the, the circuit. So if we have uh, 120 volts here, we have 120 volts here. If we have a push and pull that's going on this entire circuit, I'm already on yellow. We have this that's happening over the large circuit. But within that circuit, we also have this that's happening. Right, if a push and pull is happening here and we connect the middle points, well, a push and pull is still gonna happen here at the same time while this is pushing and pulling, this is also pushing and pulling because we have an overall push and an overall pull on the black and red. So if we cut this wire out completely, we're still gonna have that overall push and pull. And instead of having uh, all of those loads uh, where we have like a red over here where we've got a pulling happening, and we've got a pushing happening on the white. While we have a pushing happening on the black and a pulling happening on the white, you notice there's a push and pull happening on the white. So current cannot travel, right? It's basically opposing each other. That's, it's, a, it's something that is opposing the current flow. So nothing's able to travel. So the only other way that it has through the circuit to make that completed loop is through the 220. But what that does is instead of just having one load in a 120 volt circuit, it takes two loads of equal size and puts them in series in a 240 volt circuit, which still allows them to operate at the exact same level that they would if there were only one of them at the 120 volt level. Another interesting thing to note is say we didn't have a black and a red, instead we just had two blacks coming out of our panel. Well, this is where we would have a doubling up of current on the neutral from what we would have on each one of the, the legs. So if we had, uh, you know, 10 amps flowing here and we had 10 amps flowing here, well, the circuits are on the same phase. So we have a pushing that's happening here, we have a pushing that's happening here, and we have a pulling from both sides going the same direction. So we're actually gonna have 10 amps going out, 20 amps coming back, because we have 10 coming out from our source, going through our loads, and double of that coming back. So we would end up having uh, 20 amps flowing on that neutral. That's why it's really, really important to not stack a whole bunch of loads on one phase, um, especially if you have like a multi-wire branch circuit or something like that, where you have two ungrounded hot conductors going out into a load that are sharing a single neutral. You need to make sure one is on red phase and one is on black phase so that there's not any uh, excess current. But if you have both of them on black phase, you're gonna double up the current in that neutral and you could eventually just uh, melt all of the insulation off of that neutral if you don't think about it, especially when you have nonlinear loads and things like that to consider. 
Now, one more thing that we can do that's probably pretty important to do to justify the case that I just made is to look at the math. So if you look at Ohm's law and we look at the relationship that resistances have to current flow, basically a resistance is something that opposes the flow of current. So the more resistance that we build up in a circuit, the less current can flow all the way to the point where it's too much resistance acts as an insulator and no current will flow. If we have zero resistance, so much current will flow that we end up in a dangerous situation. So in the case where we had one bulb and we were saying that we had 120 volt circuit, well, how much current did we say was gonna flow? We said it was gonna be two amps, right? So if we look at the math, uh, for this, we're using resistance. So we're using E equals I times R, that's Ohm's law, it's saying voltage equals current times the resistance. We know we have 120 volts. We don't know what our current is. We're saying it's two, but this is to check the math. We've got 60 ohms of resistance, so 60I. We would divide out 60 to cancel that out, move the 60 to the other side because we're trying to balance an equation. Anytime you do something on one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other. Uh, so 160 divided or 120 divided by 60 that equals two amps. So on this 120 volt circuit with one light bulb, we have two amps of current flowing through it. There's only one resistance there. So in the case that I just made saying that all that current is going through the 240 volt circuit. Now you're thinking, well, shoot, we're running 240 volts through these bulbs, like aren't they gonna just blow up? No, because we have the added resistance. We're doubling the amount of resistance, even though we're doubling the amount of uh, voltage, the current is going to lower. So anytime uh, there's, there's a relationship that these figures have that basically says that there's an inverse uh, proportional relationships and there's directly proportional relationships. So look what happens if we run 240 volts through these because now we no longer have a neutral, right? We said no neutral is hooked up and it's flowing back to the panel that the current is actually flowing through both of the loads, through both of the light bulbs before it makes its completed circuit. So we would take 240, sorry, 240, uh, times I, or I'm sorry, equals I, we don't know what our current is. And then our resistance is double because we have twice as many. So we have 120 ohms. Well, take 120 out to leave I by itself, divide 120 on both sides, and we still get two amps. So that's saying that there is either way in a 240 volt circuit with two loads that are the exact same, or a 120 volt circuit that has one load we're gonna get the same amount of current flowing. And it, it, that wouldn't be the case if we had a 120 volt circuit and we added two 60, amp, or, uh, 60 ohm loads, two resistances in that circuit, this would not be the same. But since we're doubling our voltage and we're getting 240 volts now, and now we can have two more resistance or an extra resistance basically, and we'll get the same amount of current flowing through that circuit. Then mathematically, we can do one more thing just to double check this and make sure that this is all sound. We can do the power formula. So we have Ohm's law, which is the resistance, uh, current and voltage relationship. And then we've got kind of a reduced version of Joule's law, which is power and voltage and amperage. It doesn't take into account resistance, but we can still do the same thing. So the equation for that is power equals current times voltage. So if we have our power in this 120 volt circuit, we've got a 100 watt light bulb, then we would have 100 watts equals our current. We don't know what our current is. Um, and these are just random numbers, so we're not gonna get the same values, but the values between these circuits are going to be the same. So I just want you to know that ahead of time. Uh, times our voltage, 120. When you take 120, cancel it out, divide by 120, you end up getting 0.8 three repeating. So we'll just say uh, 0.8 amps. Now, what if we put two 100 watt light bulbs into this 240 volt circuit? So we're increasing the amount of wattage because we have two bulbs. Each of them's burning at 100 watts. So now there's 200 watts, but we've also put it in a 240 volt circuit. So same thing, we would have 200 watts for our power equals our current, which we don't really know. I'm guessing it's gonna be that times 240 volts this time. So we divide out 240, 240, and we still get 0.83 amps, 83 repeating. 
So either way, it's going to say if you have two loads and they're equal loads, we have 100 watt, 100 watt, same resistances. If we increase the voltage and run that full 240 volts through those two loads, whereas we were just running 120 through one of those loads, the, uh, the, the fundamentals of that circuit, the actual uh, what is going on in that circuit is the exact same thing because those loads are now both running in a 240 volt circuit. So you would think the more resistance in a circuit, the less current's gonna flow, but if you increase the pressure to 240 volts, you double that voltage, the same thing is going to happen. So those loads are not gonna explode or nothing bad's gonna happen to those light bulbs. Uh, we're just now increasing our voltage, but also increasing our resistance, so the current will stay the same throughout that circuit. Now, can I fit another color in here to make this even more confusing? What happens if we were to say that these are not two amps? and two amps. What if this is like a super huge, you know, like 300 watt lamp or something? We'll just say that there's 10 amps that are flowing through that load. And we'll say that there's two amps flowing through this load. This is a lot smaller uh, bulb. So because we have both of these things, again, we have the current on this neutral that is in a pushing cycle where we have it on a pulling cycle on the other phase. Uh, then you're still gonna have current that's able to go partially this way and partially this way, but the, the, the proportion of the current in those situations is gonna be different. So we have more current that's able to travel through this circuit than there is through this circuit. So it's actually a subtractive event that happens. So if you have 10 amps minus two amps, you have eight amps of current. So there would be current flowing through here and you would take your multimeter, you'd clamp across that and it would read eight amps. So in that situation with an imbalanced load, yes, current does always carry the imbalance because there's nothing preventing it. There's no like perfectly even wave that's canceling out. This was something as a helper that I was always trying to understand. I was just like, wait, if current's not flowing, where is it flowing? And it has to flow, it has to go. If you have a completed circuit, there's a load that is turned on, there is current moving and carrying that energy through the system somehow. And it's not just like, like stopping here, but somehow still conducting to make the light turn on, but there's no current actually flowing. You know, like a lot of people get confused on that whole thing. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Best can't use it and video.